Hello YouTube, Steve Trucker here, just checking that the cameras are running if you I might edit that out, but we'll see. <laughs> yeah, so today's gonna be a daily vlog. I've only started the day probably a few hours ago, around 5.30. We were around uh sort of Portsmouth sort of way. So parked up at a BP garage around there last night. Obviously. <laughs> well, maybe not obviously. And we've got over to here to near Piddly Hinton, whatever it's called. Tipped off, which is near Dorchester if you're not too sure where that is. Very near Dorchester, we're just in oh, stones throw away in most terms. And we're going to be going the country way up to ship to Mallet Way to go and get loaded with some yoghurt. Um, and today's date, by the way, before I forget, is the fourth today, fourth of the fifth, May. It's the start of, well, start of truck fest at Peterborough today. So I hope all the best, even though the weather, well, if it's anything like it is over here at the moment, that, as you may see, yeah, some nice sunny spells, but there's <laughs> also some wet spells, and it is a bit cold at the moment. It is actually picking up now. It's about three Celsius, believe it or not, while stepping. I'm on the hill. Thought I'm on the bottom of the valley or something. Never mind. Mental weather having of late. But nevertheless, I hope everybody who's going to Truck Fest this weekend had a good time, because by the time you see this, it's all happened at Peterborough. I did come to, um, I don't take this the wrong way, I did come to the going to Peterborough but in some ways and quite, but no my luck, I'll get to Shipton Mallet and it'll be the wettest truck fest ever, or it'll be snowing or something bizarre. It's not going to be sunny for when I go. <laughs> Hope it is, but ever, ever most the positive. <laughs> Sorry, I'm laughing at my own jokes. I know it's bad. Yeah, so all good. I'm, as I said in my channel update, I do apologise for any any hold-ups or not hold-ups, but in any lack of content at its cause. I mean, I've just been really busy of late, and I don't see an end of it at the moment because I've got so much on my plate at home at the moment. I, I can manage to release one video a week, easy enough. Even if I do it at the end of my weekend, which I've been having to do, that's why I've been getting the video around about Thursday and even Friday on some some accounts, you know, which normally I release a video probably around Wednesday, Tuesday or Wednesday, normally. It's probably me, be, me being hypercritical of myself, shall I say. Yeah, so all good. So today isn't going to be a normal day today, so we're going up to load up at Road Ship to Mallet area. You may know where we load. And then we're going down to Wimborne to deliver to a farm. As usual. <laughs> Not complaining, but as usual. So I have to watch it on this bend, take it slightly slow more so we don't tap the building. Everybody happy. Yeah, so I so say it's been pretty normal of late. I was, it was more exciting earlier on the last shift. There was actually, we did go over to the east and do the east-west thing again. Which I did consider filming that again, but I thought I've already released east-west to already. And end up just being just a full day of driving. We didn't go quite as far to the west as we did last time. Not complaining. It is what it is. But I had a fairly busy shift last week. We were going to have an early finish until uh, we had an emergency job come up. Or a high party job that came up that I had to I sort of apologise for it was meant to be, or sounded like it was meant to be one one, then it turned into two ones, which I thought, one one, happy days, not not a drama, but, you know, it was a late finish, I'd say, so I'm not complaining, it's extra money at the end of the day, it was just a bit frustrating, <laughs> I didn't expect the second one, 
you know that came out of the blue especially when it was going back to the same place to go back to the same delivery point <laughs> it was a bit ah. yeah so I mean everything's normal there's not much in terms on the update front so I've done that the other day the channel update I'm getting psyched about my holiday in around about four weeks time give or take going off to Florida for around a week a week to nine days I think it's after checking my planner thing keep forgetting I think it might be seven days out there seven eight days for which isn't bad looking forward to it it's gonna be a big holiday we're not gonna completely theme park it because it'd be crazily expensive if we did as well <laughs> I mean you want you look even if you pre-book the tickets it's, you know, it's like, we'd go to a few theme parks don't get wrong that is in the planner but we're gonna do a bit more of the uh, not quite touristy holiday but more of a cultural holiday as well so we're gonna go to St Augustine's we might actually go properly again if we can check out uh, the raceway, go and check out the beach, the beaches, obviously the goo NASA as well. A few other bits and bobs, maybe a bit of crazy golf here and there. And, and a couple of chill days as well, which could be a beach day as well. We'll see. It's going to be a good holiday, I can feel it. <laughs> I'm looking forward to it because I said I work a lot. And that was going to be the other video I, was going to, I may still do today. I want to see how I feel. I might do it tomorrow. Even though I think I have done this video before. So I'll just double check on my video releasings. So I want to do a video that talks about some of the negatives of being a truck driver slash tramper. You know, for all those who are wanting to get into the industry. Not to put you off, not to scare you away, but to just talk about some of the honest truths that you will run into and stuff you might not overly think about. And you will probably still go, yeah, 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 isn't it? And I was like that, don't get wrong. And it is eye opener when you become a tramper. And I really enjoy my job now, but when I first got into it, oh, it was really exciting to start off with, doing tramping, but then it starts to get to you. And it's, it ends up being small things that get to you. If you allow them to. Now you just need to get your head in the right mental space to do it and just weigh out what and just focus on the positives it's one of my biggest advice focus on the positives no matter how small they may seem you know I always look at it I look forward to my weekends I, I, I try to make the most of my weekends that's one of the reasons why I'm really busy at the moment because I'm just getting things done at the moment otherwise if I have loads of time off I, I get a bit distracted I'm easily distracted, in other words, on my days off. Unless I pack them full of stuff. At the same time, it is for rest and all that. Make sure it gets through because it is a bit tight down here. Yeah, what we all know, mate, eight, nine minutes or so. Yeah, nine minutes or so. So we'll chat for another five minutes or so. Because it's not... Well, it's going to be a normal, probably a normal length daily vlog today. But because I've uh, missed a bit in the morning out. Which give me a sort of angry sort of... Yeah, keep control of your dog. <laughs> you know. force vehicles to swing out wide. And I wasn't even fast either. That brings me to another thing which I have discussed a little bit about is when watching back my videos it looks like I'm going very fast but I, honestly I'm not. It's got, I think it's because it's what I've heard it's because the wide angle it makes everything come up seem like it's going a lot faster than it actually is. But I like the wide angle it gives you a nice vision of what's ahead on the forward camera and gives you a good it just makes sure I'm in shot as well, not having to worry about to make sure the camera is a hundred percent, you know, bang on. 
and I can just generally aim it. So over here, I might be slightly skewy at the moment. Look here, look a bit. We might be fine there. We're all good. Yeah, so got a holiday look, looking forward to. Uh, got Truck Fest as well, as I mentioned. That ship to Mallet we're going to. All booked, paid for, done, dusted. Obviously, all okay through the boss. I just need to organise. I know, yes, at Truck Fest they do have a big wash. I am aware of that. But I'm going to have a word with uh, a company I've worked for in the past just to see if I can get access to the wash. Even if it's like giving them a crate of beer or something. Because I've been given the day off before to get the truck prepped. And fair enough, take it to the truck wash. I'm not saying they won't do it. They probably will do an awesome job at Truck Fest, the truck wash. But it might be a bit cheaper for me to go and do it this way. I might still get, get it washed again at Truck Fest, but we'll see. But at least with a whole day of prepping, if I have access to wash, I can get everything gleaming, sorted, so when I get there, it's not needing as much work as if, well, as if I hadn't even bothered before. I'm still in the process of polishing my tank up. I know I need to do some videos on it and other things I'm looking at doing. I'm not going to go completely mental, primarily because the other news I had announced that I'll be getting a new truck which it'll be this year sometime, what I've gathered. But um, I've been given the ETA when to expect as of yet, because no, my luck, I'll probably end up with a new truck just before. <laughs> which isn't a bad thing, but at the same time, if you spend a lot of time polishing a tank, which I'm not just doing it for Truck Fest, it is also to make the truck look presentable at work anyway, you know, so I gave it a good spruce up yesterday because I was waiting to get loaded for quite a while, so I thought, I'll just give, since we're allowed to do it there, we'll give the truck a bit of spruce up. On the outside, give the tank good polish, still looking good because I actually haven't bothered for a few weeks, probably because the weather's been up and down and just not been in the mood for polishing. Yep, so we're getting there. It's it's all getting there. So I gave it a really good wash yesterday. I didn't clean the top of my hydraulic tank, which was getting a bit gipping. I had to chuck the sponge dry right after that because that's how gipping it was. I could have cleaned that, but once you've shifted the oil, it's probably best to get rid. So it's looking a lot more presentable on top of the tank because uh, when they topped up at Scania, they slightly overfilled it. For them to rectify it, it would have taken them all day to get their hands on it. Ah, well, this is like a month or so ago now. I did try and bring it up with them. But, you know, things are what they are. So we've got the exhaust sorted out, so the exhaust is blowing on the last shift as well. Or, or the other week before I took it in Scania for the service. I think they've rectified it so far. There's only one outstanding issue. That'll be rectified when we go back to the yard. It's not a major issue, or two issues. One of the bulbs I can't access. Just because of that, I'm not going with climbing up there and falling down or injuring myself to replace it. If I'm fine, so it's got a step pad or something, I might. But, uh, we'll see. It's not a major one that you were, it's just the top marker light on the trailer on the, on the front end of it. Is out. And my front headlights were doing a bizarre thing yesterday. I thought a bulb had gone, so I stripped out my front left headlight to replace the bulb knocked it and it turned back on again. Then the other one went off, so then I turned the lights on and off, then they came back on. Which, who knows? I don't think it was a loose connection, because it all seemed okay when I opened it up. 
just when I went to go and turn the lights on to make sure it was the right bowl, because it looked okay, it turned on. Never mind, it was, I think it might have been either a connection somewhere or who knows anybody's guess really. I so about to go and turn in a quite tight bit now. So what I'll do, I'll leave it as we are. You know roughly where we are, what we're doing. It's basically the, you know, I didn't say what day it is, but you can check from the date anyway, which is a Saturday. And we're making progress. So I'll catch you in a little bit. I'll probably do a bit of a time lapse in a minute. And uh, I'll catch you probably after we have loaded. Be my best guesstimate. So I hope you enjoy this vlog. I will chat about a few other things a bit later. And that will be a good day. Yeah. We'll see you in a little bit. Don't you blame me Yeah, this feeling I've got is making me crazy Making me crazy So I'm just gonna drive, drive, drive Loaded at Chipton, and we're now just I'm past Morn and Chipton drive, drive, drive. on the way down to Wimborne. And it's going to be pretty busy down this road, I think. Certainly, in, in terms of people who are wanting to cruise. I want to cruise, man. I want to cruise, e.g., in high performance vehicles. <laughs> Which, uh, which reminds me, there's actually a, a set of lights down here, past the Monsters Villages. Just after you go on the, the 303, there's a, a, a crossway that has a set of lights. The left lane is to go straight on and left. The white lane is only to go right, but you can imagine what people do at that one, even though it's signalled red normally when you first move off, if you're going straight on, on green it's multi year light control so each lane has its own separate set of lights so that you know white lane don't go left lane you okay or left lane don't go and white lane go 
that sort of thing. You may see it on this bit of vlog if you do a highlight it, but quite often what I find there is people get impatient, they choose the opportunity to use to overtake. So they get into lane two, and it happens quite regularly this, it's, it's almost like clockwork sometimes. And you can tell I've almost got a few people off because they don't expect me to start moving when it turns green for me. <laughs> like, what do you expect? I don't expect you to be moving in lane two that's meant to be turning white. <laughs> when it's red for you. <laughs> but it, it's one of those lights that you can see stuff happening and you wonder why there's near misses. I think this is one of the high uh, risk routes in the area. I think this is one, one of many. I think the entire route from here down to Wimborne, or almost the entire route, is classed as a high risk route. In terms of what I mean, there's been a lot of accidents on this road. Same as uh, between Yeovil and Dorchester, the road. Uh, sorry, I've forgotten the name of the road, but. Uh, the, the, the main road that links Dorchester to Yeovil, that is a high risk route as well. I've seen quite a few nasty stuff happen on there, and mainly in the aftermath, to be honest. I have witnessed that it lively happen. But, uh, you know, it does happen, and I can see why on that road all happens there's some, certain, some technical sections and that's where normally where it happens or you've got some nice wide open straights where I think people get a bit yee-haw think they can overtake something when they either got oncoming or and yeah leave the rest to the imagination and also some of the cambers along that road are quite interesting as well yeah so everything's all good today so far, normal Saturday traffic. Haven't we had too much? I'm tempting fate now, I know. I know I'm tempting it. I don't want it, but it, I can see it happening today, and certainly tomorrow. Because it is Bank Holiday Weekend this. And as I learned the other Bank Holiday Weekend, well, I knew it from before, um, years and years out, you know, on, on, it's always the same case that traffic's always a nightmare on the Bank Holiday Weekend but the risks people take is seriously questionable. Well, more than questionable. You know, in terms of they should be handing their licenses over, to be honest. You know, I don't get any further too much of it, but you know, it is, it's not amusing, it's amusing in some contexts, but isn't in others, because I know what the consequences are when it goes wrong. You know, either injury, death, or damage, or a mixture of all. You know, God forbid. And normally the people who were caused it, if they survive, wondering, well, oh, how did this happen? Either owing up to it or going, oh, I do not know what I've done wrong there, or I do it all the time. It never has gone wrong before. Not the point. <laughs> I can see what the pitfalls of people will be, but it's not a pleasant thing to go through an accident. I said I've been through a mine accident recently with that car a few months ago. And even though it wasn't my fault, it wasn't pleasant on my behalf. I felt sick. You know. I I know I'm not out there to go and have accident, I want that's the least thing I want to avoid an accident at all costs. Obviously a long jump calls another one well avoiding. <laughs> you know, sometimes you are in a sticky situation. Yeah. So it's all the stuff you got to be aware about on the roads, you know, all the pre planning, reading the traffic, that's another big one to learn. Is to Read traffic, never think you know what the traffic will do. Always expect the unexpected. You know, I won't put it past people these days what, what they can do. So I need to keep it under for a wee bit of control down here. Well, obviously, control all the time, but you know, 
wind it, wind it in a wee bit because it is quite a steep hill. And yes, we're getting up another one, but I'd rather go down it safely and crawl up the other one than go down unsafely, have an accident, and not make it back up to the top of the this pit. Well, we had a bit of good momentum there, but we're going to feel it in a minute. Ever since turned that exhaust fix, it seems to have a bit more power about her, which is good. She's holding her own a wee bit more on the hills, which might have been the issue. <laughs> yeah, so we had a blowing exhaust, so we had to have that sorted. But it's amazing how close people get behind you. If I had to slam on for something right now, that car behind me would have a tough time stopping before going into me. Not saying they wouldn't, but but you know, <laughs> I suppose people don't think. And as I said, that falling on what I was discussing a minute ago, a lot of people just do not think what the consequences of the actions may be or could be. They just think if we get up close, we can get past them quicker. And to be honest, if he hangs back, he's actually hanging back now to be honest, a little bit further than he was. You can actually see what's coming. So you, you can pick a safe point to overtake when it's clear, a nice stretch, maybe something like this. Maybe not now, there is oncoming. I wouldn't now, but I wouldn't put past people. Just try and keep as the liquid is moving a little bit. Slight sidewalk there. As well as a little bit dominating the white line and the wee bit there. Yeah, she's about under control now. Yeah, and the other thing when you drive a tank is, uh, as I've discussed in the past, is you do get sidewalk, especially with active load, as well as liquid surges forward and backwards. And you could argue it's a liquid surge side to side. It's okay, you can feel it, but it's a lot more difficult from driving anything else. And you've just got to be aware of it, and just stay calm when it mocks. Don't overreact, because otherwise you can over-emphasise it, which you do not want. It makes it worse, in other words. <laughs> Red, so we're winding her in, we're winding her in, up the white down so the exhaust brake can kick in. This is the set of lights here. What are we on now? Nine minutes. Yeah, as you can see, it goes green for us. Quite often a car will get in the right lane. Not necessarily now, but if we came to stop, normally you can see it sometimes. You can see, you can almost see the chain of thought going on with them. So you get, get the one who will ponder, who thinks about it, then does it. Who knows it's wrong, but when she sort of kids himself, oh, it's worthwhile. It's perfectly safe. What could ever go wrong? <laughs> and also, obviously, they're thinking, oh, is there a policeman around or anything like that as well, probably, going, make sure it's all clear. <laughs> a policeman catch you do it, you could be in a lot of trouble. Probably points to your licence and a nice little fine to look after. And obviously if you got too many points you lose your licence. Yeah, so all good but and this is one of the things that you drive on the bank all day weekend is you just got to be aware about that the Muppet factor goes up tenfold. It's not always readable when it will be at work. Sometimes on the Friday when everybody's in a rush to go out to places, go home, etc, etc. See, we got a li liquid surge there. That's, that's what it can do. It can actually break you. Not break you in terms of breaking the truck, but breaking in terms of slowing you down. So we turned the corner there because I had to power on it suddenly jolted backwards as if it had as if the trailer had put the brakes on that's what it feels like it's 
really odd feeling when it does it. It's just knowing when it does it, just stay calm, just work your way through it. As long as you're powering on, you're remaining fairly smooth about yourself, it will be fine. It happens. As I say, you can speed you up, but equally the load can slow you down. Cough when you don't want to slow down as well. <laughs> And that's one reason why you do not want to sit right behind the tanker. Because guess what? If the liquid surge happens and it slows the truck down dramatically. Uh, there's no brake lights coming on. <laughs> you're going into it. <laughs> if you don't expect it. Or well, you're not on the ball at the time it does it. Well, I suppose people aren't aware about the consequences of being right behind vehicles. I know, yes, it's because they do not know all the limitations of your vehicle and they might not be aware of liquid surges and what tankers can do. But my general word of advice to anybody, no matter who you are, is just keep your braking distance. Seriously, and that's why you're taught to keep your braking distance. Is to mediate you not having to know what limitations of that truck ahead of you is or that specialist vehicle or whatever in front of you. You know, is it's generally there because of also your reaction timing there's always a reaction time some people are slower than others vice versa and some people are slightly quicker I grant it that but never ever underestimate what could happen and that's why you have braking distances and that's even if you're on your car and your motorbike it's advised strongly you keep your braking distance and maybe a little bit on top as well. Not take take the mick, but think, you know, if that vehicle slams on right now, can I safely stop? And if the answer is no, you're too close. And a general rule of thumb, if you can't see the mirrors of the vehicle that you're behind, you're too close. Plus also the vehicle that's in front probably may not see you as well. But in an emergency, you know, if somebody steps out in front of me, I'm stopping. If somebody's delegating me, tough luck, I'm really sorry. It's at the end of the day, you've chosen, or whoever it is behind me has chose the tailgate. Whoever's gone in front, most of the time, may have not chosen or may have not realised that I'm on them. You know, might have been a kid who ran out, we ain't aware of the road. It could be, that's a perfect example. You know, that sort of scenario. Or a vehicle ahead overtaking. I know in the situation, if I don't stop, I had it the other week, if I did an emergency stop, that vehicle would be dead. Or, you know, seriously wiped out. Yes, I'm going to save the car behind me, but luckily the car that's tailgating me the other week, I used this in the example the other day in the tailgating video managed to obviously swerve out otherwise they would have gone into the back of a truck they would have done <laughs> I mean that's when they were calling me up pleasant trees see a diversion for something hopefully that's not for us obviously it's unsuitable for heavy goods vehicles <laughs> if it was for us we may have to replan that we which uh, might be a bit of a, not a struggle but it's gonna be a massive diversion I think it's probably for an event or something down that way that's having dramas. So what we do, we just slightly take a caution up this hill. Just shy of 50, which are legally allowed to do, but we need to just back it out a smidge. Lower the gear, gear sit down a wee bit. Yeah, so I thought I'd just show you this bit of road here between uh, Warminster and Shaftesbury. I'll just talk about it a wee bit. As I said, it's a high risk road. Lots of accidents happen along here. You can probably see why. This is another reason up here. This is a very steep ascent for us and it's obviously a descent for oncoming traffic. I've seen trucks who race too fast up this hill just way too fast, they're literally probably empty or light going, you know, I'm coming down fully laden going down cautiously and trust me, you will whack the mirrors on the truck if you're going too quick up the hill or down the hill 
fish there. It is reasonably tight in places, and you got these bends, which aren't fun for trucks. And you got a nasty camber on this corner. Nasty one. As you thought, see there, it goes down slightly left, which is quite disconcerting, because you do feel it in the truck. And it can pull the truck, especially with active load. And so we're up most of the way up the hill now, just up the final bit of ascent. And that's why it's solid white line all the way down it pretty much. Because it's so high risk along here. And if you know this is here, you know, obviously take, like myself, action about it to try and prevent an accident from happening. Be cautious because he, you know, it might be a driver coming down the other way, he doesn't know the road, didn't expect a descent with curves and all that. And if they're in the truck or something, you know, they might be having to take a bit more action than they needed to be doing. There we go, we're at the top. Change up. Yeah, we're just pretty much into shaft screen now. So it was a bit of a long chit chat, long driving chat there on the day vlog. But uh, I reckon we're going to go and get tips. We've got a bit of muddle me there if I clean that off me. Yeah, we'll do it in here though. I mean, I've had a bit of muck on me. Yeah, so. We're all good, we're making progress, but as I said, be careful in the Shaftesbury areas. If you've been here before, you know why. There's lots of hills around it, and there is some technical, heavy good straights as well down to what I would class them as. I just caught myself in some mud or something while I was getting in or something. I was fueling up. So yeah, so I'll catch you in a little bit. I'll probably do a time lapse in a bit maybe on the way back probably let's see i hope you enjoyed this bit i'll see you in a few microseconds
YouTube welcome back it is obviously not yesterday which was the 4th or 5th or Saturday yesterday it's now Sunday I've got to do my outro and this is going to be obviously my outro my bus decided to do a bit of a interesting making his own parking space unless it is a sort of official parking area who knows who knows who knows Buses do their own things and anyway. Yeah, so I've just completely forgotten the way we got loaded at Yo Valley. Well, sorry, you, you know where I go anyway. I'm not gonna say it again, I try not to mention customers. Got loaded at our ship to mallet customer. My bad, I shouldn't have said that, never mind. Well, I haven't been told set told not to say it, I just try not to. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and we're off to our customer just sort of just south of here, south of Ainsbury, where we parked up in the top end of the industrial estate last night. So we couldn't fit in down here. So I've just popped down here this morning just to grab myself a cheeky coffee and a nice savoury treat. I had a McDonald's breakfast uh, yesterday, so I'm not going to have one today. Let's turn my night eater off. A bit smoky, a bit smoky. Until it's first thing in the morning for this truck. Yeah, it's when my air suspension was being a bit funny on the way down. I did check it just to make sure, but uh, yeah, it basically in my weight thing said I only had about less than half a load. And my rear reason why that axle was up when it should have been down normally it does it if you it'll go down like a few meters away from it we move off sometimes it can be a bit funny like that but who knows i think that's in the sense is not not picking up correctly as i would found it a bit odd there was no sign of any spillages or anything like that this was a bit paranoid swear i didn't see any sign of spillages because we do open the tank up to that to breathe, but I don't see people nicking the load either. But you never know. Any other person would nick it, it'd be another farmer. <laughs> and then yeah, it would have taken a bit of a job to do, and to be done it quietly, <laughs> and to do it. I was sort of at the end of the road sort of thing alongside another truck. Yeah, I said loads all there, so there's no drums, it was just the sensor. I was getting paranoid on down. I was like, what? Could have shred that amount of weight that fast. Yeah. So I do apologise, I, I just completely forgot to vlog as I was planning to sort of vlog past Stonehenge. But I think I was just probably in in the mood yesterday, or in the flow. You can go up that way, but you sort of go past the uh, entrance army camp. I don't want to alarm them too much. <laughs> What's this truck coming up here? And this is now the, that used to be the cut through up there as well. But now with this new new housing estate down here, it's created a new cut through for us just makes that interesting roundabout section to, to keep an eye out for any fast movers. Because now what car drivers are like. No offence to car, well, I'm a car driver myself, you know, I'm not trying to take the mic, but, you know, <laughs> you know what I'm trying to get at, the Muppets. That's what I'm saying. There's always a fast Muppet about. So I'm just taking it steady because we'll go around quite a few bends. I don't want to upset the load too much. It's only just woken up after sleep. <laughs> okay, left here. Yeah. Then away onto this. It's changed a bit. I suppose it's because everything's blossomed since I was last down this way, or coming in this way, shall I say. Oh, baby. We can do it. We can do it. 
yeah, so done all that. Yeah. So I mean, it wasn't a hype exciting day yesterday, to admit. Just a good chat vlog sort of day. What are we on? Five minutes already. Yeah. So hopefully you can see me okay. Is it dark still? I obviously got my headlights on. Just uh, emphasise myself a bit more outside, even though it is getting light. It's starting to light quite early this morning. I mean, I started to shift pretty much five o'clock. I could have started a bit earlier, but just wasn't in the mood this morning to start any earlier than five. So I've been needing a week starting at five. Still a short break, still only like 10 hours off, so I effectively had a, an hour lay in to what I could have done. I mean, I could be an hour ahead right now, but it's not going to make any difference really today, fundamentally. It's probably giving me more of a chance for a second load if I won the customer tight. Now, it's a massive development they've put in there, though, and they're still building it years after they started it. They've been at that for, oh, well, since I was in the army. Well, we're talking about over five years ago. Well over five years ago. I swear they started it around then, if not longer. I suppose, it, as I said, it is a massive development, the building. Easy done it reasonably safely, not complaining about the overtake, that's okay. <laughs> Get there at quarter to six, which isn't too bad. It's only about 11 minutes away. <laughs> only down the road, effectively, just some narrow tight driving down some sections, and I'll call it a day with a vlog. I so I do apologise yet again about about yesterday. I should have filmed on the way back. I, I realised late last night, but I thought I'll do my outro today as I'm driving up to the customer. Come on, baby. You can tell how she acts when she's fully laden. All it takes is the air seat to go up. My foot just marginally retracts on the accelerator, and you get the depowering motion. Yes, fair enough, you hold it flat down, it sort of alleviates that, but when you're lightly halfway down, because you want power, but you don't want to... You can get caught out like that, which is normal. If you're a new driver, it can be a bit... <laughs> really? Yeah, but I'm glad uh, the channel's growing. I've noticed quite a bit of an in increase in numbers this week. I mean, I've had, what, four or five people so far, just over five, five or seven days subscribed. Absolutely amazing. I mean, I would like to say a massive thank you. I mean, seriously. And to all those who've been originally subscribed, you know. You know, it blows me away at the end of the day. Every sub... And that shows me a bit of support, you know, just motivates me more to create more vlogs. I, and as I say, I do apologise for all. It isn't a lack of content, really. I'm living up to what my promise is, is to release one video a week. I, I suppose I've come, as I said, from, I've said this before, that I've come from a period of time where I was releasing, you know, two or three videos a week, pretty much most weeks, you know. <laughs> But even then I knew I was going to have it probably at one video a week, ideally. Not every week, but, you know, as the backbone of the channel. But hopefully you're enjoying the content. I'm trying to produce... I might rearrange the channel again. I don't worry about it. A lot of it will stay the same. Or I might keep it as it is. But fundamentally, I, I, I found a lot of my... Not all of my videos, but uh, 
A lot of more educational based videos seem to be very popular. Maybe it's because it, you know, I mean, I know they're not the most entertaining videos in the world. I'm not, I'm not trying to create clickbait as such. You know, I'm trying to create on the educational front videos that we can discuss about stuff, talk about, you know, stuff related to trucking, you know, mainly aimed at the new drivers, but if you're our old hand and just have some interest in, in what I have to say, it might be interesting. I mean, there is always other views within the industry, you know, it doesn't mean that my view is 100% what, what the book will say, you know, or what other people would agree with, it doesn't mean it's wrong, but you know, it's a bit like there's always more than one way of cutting a pie, you know, or doing something, you know, there's always more than one correct way normally. <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, uh, I was going through the window, I realised the wind noise is like earlier might be a bit of an issue, so you have to take it easy down here. Yeah, so I'm going to focus point more on my educational based videos, but I'll still do like today the day what I call my daily vlogs, which is literally daily, uh, but a day vlog of my day, which you know might be entertaining. As, as I've done in this vlog, we've we'll talked about quite a few different things, you know, just within one video. And in some ways it's another channel update as well thrown in, but you know, I like to have a proper channel update video for people who just want to go, what's going on on your channel? <laughs> you know, anything to be aware of this month. <laughs> But what I might try and do when I do the channel update, but as I said I've been really busy of late, I might try and release two videos that sort of week, but don't hold me to it. it it's all very dependent on what's going on real, in real, well not real, real life, but you know, in life. So I really enjoy creating the vlogs, but it takes a lot of time to do sometimes and some of them. Not saying this would be a hard one. So sometimes the ones you think are going to be the hard ones to put together end up being the easier ones, and the one that you think is going to be the easy one to do is the one that takes a while to get sorted, or vice versa. Because it does sap a bit of time sometimes. Yeah, so as I said, I am amazed with the increase in the channel. Um, and also the recent comment on my channel update, uh, you know, was asked, I've forgotten your name, I do apologise, I can't obviously check because I'm driving at the moment, but you did ask what sort of product do I take, I did comment back on this by the way, which I'm sure he has seen already, but if you're not already aware, you know, we mainly do farm feeds, for primarily, I do a lot of like uh, the waste yoghurt milk, also do molasses, which as I said on the uh, apply is a binder we also do yeast and stuff like that as well which are all primarily I go mainly to delivering to farms primarily I do go between different factories where I'm moving mainly molasses but also I do deliver the molasses as well to farms you know, that can be quite fun work at times, or takes you to more interesting places than normal. Not saying where I'm going isn't interesting, I mean this probably is interesting to some, someone, but this is a regular customer, so what I'm basically meaning is, it's a normal for me this, this is, you know, I don't even really need to have a sat nav to come to this place, I know where it is. <laughs> and just have it on for ETA purposes. Yeah, so, Yes, again, a massive thank you, and also to the replies. If you have any comments on any of my videos, just comment down below. I'm quite happy to get back, or if anybody else wants to answer as well, can do. But I do 
try to respond and acknowledge all my replies and within reason. And what be my within reason if there's a reason for me to reply back? <laughs> or just give you a thumbs up or, you know, a like, super like, what they call it. <laughs> Yeah, as I said, I, and also to answer back on the, that comment before, reference to having some videos on the tanker. It is in the works, seriously. It, it seriously is in the works, but I do have a restriction about far filming on on customer sites, prim mainly on the farms, but equally at the factories as well. The only way around it is if I'm able to get full okay off the farmer or off the business. E.g. they have no issues, you know, but it's an awkward one to do because of that, that one condition I have. <laughs> I mean, you know, it does cut a little bit of major content that I can produce, but I do have to respect the hand that pays me at the end of the day. And I understand why it is there as well. You know, it's. I'll go through the reason in another video, but primarily it's, it's for security, and it's also for, uh, you know, protecting our company's jobs. Because we have lost jobs to other companies that have, you know, done, you know, basically found out how, how good or bad jobs are. <laughs> you know, and undercutters which is not good and that's one thing I do not want to do or be a hand of even if I'm so indirectly but hey what well, it is what it is but it, the video is in the works I do want to show you the process of how the tank operates I may have to do it in a lay-by for a chat video to talk you vaguely through it maybe connect a few hoses up but not actually pump or open valves so we are here at the farm. So I would like to say a massive thank you very much for watching today's vlog. I know yes I'm filming the entrance way but I'm going to quickly stop before going in. So you're not going to actually see the farm itself. We're still on public property as we speak till we hit that line just ahead. So what we'll do, we'll just stop here for a minute while we do the proper outro. And yet again, I'd like to say massive thank you to everybody who's watched my videos and subs. All, seriously, I say it all the time, but it, it blows me away. It, the support, you know, and all the comments I had so far has all mainly been all positive. It's all been lovely content, you know, keep it up, which you know thank you very much and uh, if you know anybody else who watches the vlogs you know pass the word as always as they would say you know spread the word yeah because I said I would like to grow the channel a bit more I am as I said working on I, and as I've said before I think I've improved I've looked back on some old content and compared it to my newer content when, there's actually a massive step change, I've noticed. Pers this from a personal standpoint, you know. But I've still got a ways to go. You know, I'm still, you know, I'm not there yet. But from what, where I've started, it, you know, <laughs> it seems to be going the right way, how I'm seeing it. I mean, the, the only negative I've seen is it's taking a bit of time for the channel to pick up. Quite a long time, really. But that sort of out of, I do what I have control of to try and work on that, but a lot of it is equally out of my control. So, yeah, it is what it is. It, as I said, it's growing now, so I'm, you know, I'm pretty happy how things are going. I'm looking to probably streamline the channel a wee bit here and there over time. To A, to make it more manageable, to improve the quality, you know, and the content ideally but the day day vlogs i want to keep us a semi backbone of the channel the other main bit will be the educational front and 
then also the chat, you know, and other related videos to the subject will be on the third quality list. But really, the day vlog and the instructional based content that's going hand in hand as the key critical. I can see maybe some of the uh, cleaning videos I'm planning to do. That might be of interest. I've still got a lot to learn about cleaning the truck even after five years, so don't teach everything on my cleaning as it's the best way of doing. I've still playing with my technique a wee bit, but you know, it might be of interest, as they always say. So, yet again, a massive thank you very much. I've now bumbled on here a wee bit. I do apologise. And I would rather get on to the customer right now. On, sorry, <laughs> it's come across a bit wrong there, but I mean, I need to crack on. <laughs> In other words, I'm not saying I don't want to chat with you any longer. I do, but we need to get cracking. So, ne nevertheless, from that point, Thank you very much. Uh, also, like, comment, and share the video where possible. Check out my Facebook and my Twitter. I know I don't comment too much. I did put a post up the other day as well, so I'm trying to put stuff up where I can. I need to just work on. I'm mainly focusing a lot more on Facebook, just because I'm fairly familiar with that. Twitter, I'm not so. I just mainly use it as update, but I might try and mirror Twitter out to Facebook if you know what I mean where possible so thank you very much I will catch you in the next one over and out